think people. he's joking, but he's I'm not. Good sure. morning, <laughs> guys. As you're on this live stream, I decided I have Archie from the RC Party. He's the guy who hosts my uh, miniatures at his store. We work together. I decided to do a live from the hobby store that I'm always talking about that I work in. And today, I'm going to be teaching him how to paint miniatures, which he's never done this before, but apparently he's got an affinity for hobbies and likes to paint and do stuff, but never built a model kit. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be doing the rest of the... Um, hey, Colin, thanks for joining. Uh, I'll be doing the rest of this turret. The lighting's a little off because we're in a store, but I'm going to drill out some antennas and continue how to upgrade armor. But first, basics of any type of scale modeling with RG. So, like I've already been discussing over the series, is instructions. His are really simple because your game workshop menus I stab together. Cut out the numbers to the corresponding pieces you want to make put it together and well he's got wire cutters here but I'm gonna give him some actual tools you can take apart so this is for cutting as close to the edge as possible do it this way if you're afraid you're gonna cut a piece of the plastic off or stress it I think I'm going to build uh, I think I like this guy Okay. So then I need to find the number of these pieces, right? Yep. Right there, that's one of the arms, 29. So yeah, over in my world. For the Abrams. So, like I was saying in my last one, but I didn't get a chance to really do it, is making these European-style aerial antennas for my M1A2 Abrams. And so, I'm gonna swing the camera this way, try to get it as close as possible. So, like I said, it's kind of hard to do without a pilot hole, but you're just gonna softly drill out a hole in the center of the antenna shaft. It doesn't have to be too deep. You're using very thin wire. Oh, happy birthday, and that's pretty cool. I still can't get, so when I set in this antenna, I'll go show you guys what I do have in stock. Nothing new Gundam related. That's very hard for us to get, but I do have the new Messer and some other interesting new kits. Just nothing crazy. I mean, that's pretty cool though. Once you draw out a hole uh, that size, all I'm gonna do is now match my antenna length. This one, and you wanna keep them pointing the same direction, so that way there's some kind of spatial context. Oh, nice. Sir, you find everything okay? Yeah, I'm just not Oh, awesome, yeah. okay. Yeah. One of my brothers still here, come in here. Gotcha. Oh, okay, so hopefully our slide should be not too disappointing. Good problems. Oh, shh. Nick is recording. Dude. He's <laughs> making a video. It's actually not a video. It's live. And oh, there, so there's cool. there's my boss who's ever supportive. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever supportive. <laughs> so... 
sick, dude. That's the kind of choir Archie's church here has. Who's there? Jimmy Hendrix? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Jimmy Hendrix. There you go. So, yeah, that's about the right length. I'm gonna take wire cutters. Snip it at the base. Alrighty. And then it's gonna be kind of hard to set in place. No! Oh, alright. It was that. <laughs> We're making Arby's run if you guys want anything. I'm good. Okay. I had a bagel. You want something, Archie? No, I think I'm okay. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Alright. I'm teaching Archie how to paint the right way. But me. <laughs> yes, sir. Whoa. Yes, I do work at a hobby shop. Yes. Okay, hold on. What you do, Archie? I'm looking to cut somebody out. That's not right. No, I got the right one. Okay, I'll do it right. I'll do it right. Alright, so then after you get all those pieced out, we're gonna I'll teach you how to do some pretty good clean up too. So yeah, for using any type of metal, um you gotta use CA glue. So, or super glue, I'm using Loctite, works just as well. So then, to clean up parts. I mean, okay, I think I got that. I got that. I mean, 26 and 23. Not four. Six. Alrighty, so now I got that all rigged up and then just a little bit more glue. I don't want too much because that will end up solidifying as a huge jelly and then you'll have to paint over that. Okay. So back over to miniature cleaning. So like I was doing with the Abrams, this is the kind of style of scraping with an exact knife instead of using a file that I use for 40k. <laughs> You got all your pieces out? No, you? man. Um, no, you're so bad. I'm still cutting. Okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, are you still cutting? And I'm waiting for my antenna to set. Um, nothing else has changed on the turret as of yet. Once I get all that together, then the turret's going to be glued down. So everything's the same, so, yeah. Hopefully I will be. I'll be here at the hobby shop until, like... 7 Eastern Standard Time, so hopefully I'll be able to see it. Did you drop a piece, Archie? I did, man. Ah! A gold piece. Well, that happens, Archie. I mean, you know it's definitely likely to happen. See, so yeah, that's pretty much the only setup I have there for that. And you can still see where the glue is, so I'll have to file that right there that little knob down a bit but other than that it'll come out like this one and that's how you detail antennas so yeah real quick um as many of you know hopefully i am a big gundam modeler but i'm a scale modeler so recently i've been ordering and bringing things into this store so i got a large 72nd scale collection now i have a more very uh, diversified before it was just 35th scale to me for the most part so I got Zvezda, Panda, Hobby, Hobby Boss, Trumpeter, all kinds of kits. 
But our Gundam selection is pretty impressive. So I like to say that we're about the second largest in Central Florida next to USA Gundam Store, which is an international company. We obviously don't ship, we're just local. And um, we got some pretty cool stuff. So there's the new master I was talking about. We have some of the new Hello Kitty stuff that's been sold out for a while up front. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty nice. So this is my whole section. So I run the orders for it. I organize it, put the stuff together. It's pretty nice. It's about full 30 feet of just gunpla. So yeah, this is my job. It's a pretty, it's a dream job. Some aircraft, Warhammer 40K, which is what we're having RG paint. But yeah, this is pretty much my section. There's my tiniest coworker. His name's Cass. He likes RC more than he likes models right now. Yeah, I do have a Beyond Global still. No, yeah. It's about the fourth one we've gotten. Um, and obviously we can't keep one by the shelf. So I thought... Ooh. What you do, Archie? I right, cross over pieces. No, 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 two there's, different stands, there's, right? Yeah, there's optional parts. So you can build them with this weapon or this one. For this one, you just need 29, which you have. Mm -hmm. And then 30. Oh, 20 and 30? Yeah, that's it. You don't need any of these pieces. And it'll be holding two different weapons. Oh, I don't cut all them pieces out almost. I cut everything out but the body, so I haven't chosen the body yet. Whatever. That'll be 20, 21, 22, 26, and 23. So you have parts of the body here. You have this head, which is on 29, so you're using a different head. That's the head? Yeah, that's this head right there. Oh, see, man, that's way too boy. <laughs> no, hold on. I need 22, right? Yeah. You'll get the hang of it. Back to scale modeling out of the world of Warhammer. It takes about 15 minutes. I usually let my antennas cure for a good hour or so. So probably just going to glue this one on without letting it cure completely just for the sake of the live stream the rest after the antennas go on like i was showing you the turret then takes a back seat to um well actually no it doesn't so right after this we're going to be going into all different manner of detailing and this is the part i'm most excited to get to i want to finish this live stream soon is because these are incredibly thin parts but they're not a perfect scale thickness and there's some things you can do with that to make it so it's really up to you but as it's setting this is pretty much how the kit's gonna look for the next couple of minutes do you have everything out Archie? Yeah, you just let us pour it So, like I said, Archie, he's the RC party. You'll see me feature him a lot on my Instagram. He is uh, teaching me, unsuccessfully, how to do RC. Ooh. And uh, he's our <laughs> RC repair guy here at Hobby Town. 22. So this, it really depends. Most 35th scale, so like what Einfacht is doing, which is Tamiya, they're a simpler style of kit. And so I'll show you the difference real quick, just in terms of boxes. So what he's building is actually, if I still have it, uh, this kit right here. So molded in 1970, nothing's changed. There's about 40 parts. And it's kind of simple. On most Tamiya kits, this is the newest Stewart tank, has about 200 parts. Um, still just as simple and easy to put together. Those projects usually take full sanding and everything, about four hours to build all the way around if you want to take that long. Um, but you can honestly do it. Like, I, I can do one of these in about an hour, two hours. Uh, whereas the kit I'm building is more like this TACOM kit or this Meng uh, Bradley, each having in excess of 1,300 pieces. And so alone, I've already put in about an hour and a half total build time. I've just gotten through the first step on the turret. So this project, before even painting, 
is already going to be at least an eight to nine hour long build process. So there's definitely more advanced armor vehicles and more advanced kits that you can build. Obviously, if you're starting out, I would choose, it goes just like Gunpla, high grade, master grade, perfect grade. They're all the same scale size. They have all the same detail. This would be more a perfect grade version of an armored tank, whereas a Tamiya or Academy M1A2 would be more like a high grade. Same vehicle, same scale, different amount of parts, different amount of detail, and different difficulty settings, even though they're all the same. Yeah, so generally, the bigger the box, the more parts it is. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the Messer box, but it's the size of one of the original Master Grades. <laughs> um, so I'm excited for that mobile suit. Sanding's not too hard. I'm going to teach Archie how to do it here in a second. The key to sanding anything right is to be light. You've got to have a light touch. So to clean up parts like this, this is a good point. So... All models, just like Gunpla, have nub marks, and you can follow them down or use what I do for what I'm going to teach Archie to do for Warhammer, and that is use metal scraping, so a knife. So here's How y'all doing? Yeah. There you go. See that? Mm -hmm. Take it. Run it almost parallel to the piece because you don't want to cut a gouge in it, and then you're going to go back up this way. If there's still a burr on it, I got Sanic 6. This is like an 800 grit, this is like a 300 grit. Don't use this because the plastic is too soft. This is a softer grit. Lighter blue, softer, and then... Keep saying this up before. Same difference, and now the burrs removed. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's how you do that. There's going to be seam lines and stuff like that all over the kit. Mm -hmm. Here's the knife and the sanding. So yeah, the Messer looks incredible. Um, I'll leave R2 for one more second, then I'm going to do the rest of the live stream just right here. R2, work over the table. <laughs> Is this still full of the spin placer? You're using this one. Are you using that gun or this one? Uh, it's up to you. Oh, you already put the head on. Are you going to do this? Is that the one I'm doing? Yeah. You can do whichever one you want, Archie. There's options. There's kit options. <laughs> Ooh, I like this guy. Like he's got it. Yeah. Oh, I see. So I do is you just take that head out. The head you put on. Just take that out. That's going to work my arm. Yeah, it should use the same, actually, different arm. No, it uses the same arm. Mm -hmm. right. So you just need to take the head out. Yeah, so Warhammer, guys, they're in standard 28 millimeter scale, which is um, essentially when I was doing, also with I'm Pac, how to make miniatures a couple days ago, that's using this. They're about this big, solid body. They're pretty cool miniatures. And you could do a lot of There's a lot of details. I have some here that I've already painted. And that's not really what I'm focusing on right now, but um, I'll also do a series on how to just paint fantasy miniatures. Those just like Gundam or what I'm teaching you guys how to do with these, uh, depending on what you want to do is how much time you put into it. And I usually put in four to six hours for each of those as well. Four to six hours is a good average for any project if you're doing a full paint on it. But obviously you don't have to spend that much time if you don't want to, and most people don't. Do you want to glue any of that together? Me. Me too, that arm is kind of loose. So you didn't want to do this guy? No, I'll rub it. 
Here's the weird music. That's good? Yeah, this is solid. So, use this, just like I've been telling you guys. It's less is more, and it's a plastic welder, not a cement. So, it's going to melt stuff. So, once you put it onto something, just let it sit there for a little bit. Otherwise, it'll end up putting fingerprints permanently into the plastic. Another nice tip. So it sets <coughs> instantly, or I should say it grabs instantly, but it takes about 15 minutes for it to fully set, so you have a lot of time to move pieces around. Depending on how soft the plastic is, that may not be possible. Uh, Warhammer is pretty good. The plastic on this Ryfield kit, like I was showing you guys in the other live stream, is really, really soft. So as soon as you put solvent on it, it will start melting and you don't want to touch it. Even though it's going to still take 15 minutes to set, don't touch it. You're going to end up scarring the plastic a lot, which I've already done. Yeah. Yes, I do know from experience. So right here, it's hard to see, but all that is scarring from solvents. So it happens. For now, I'm just going to move our antenna a little bit. So it was glued down kind of wonky. So there's that, and then they just obvious, they just kind of plug into the back. The hardest part about working with metal is you don't want to damage it. And like I said, the fit on this kit is tight, but it's a little too tight. For me. Take that apart so I'm just working on this. Did it, Archie? I did it. It's done, baby. For a cause, uh, the one I have doesn't have any screws in it, but yeah, old master grades will come with screws to reinforce parts, so it's not uncommon. So now, now you just wait for it to dry, and then we're gonna get the painting, Archie. We're gonna get to paint this whole guy. Ooh. So these parts and pieces that I cut here, I can't use them at all now or something? You could put them in a spares bin and uh, at home if you have other miniatures and like do custom building. But if you're not doing that, then no. They're kind of done for the rest of the kit. So these are easy build Warhammer kits, which means you get some customization, but not a lot. Whereas traditional ones, they don't have the easy fit pegs and you're out. Um, you have unlimited customization, really. I didn't know if that's what you wanted to do. So this is showing me. So this guy only has one stance. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he just has the one. So like I said, easy build kits have a small selection of poses. Um, whereas full on Warhammer kits will have unlimited. Though, since you've never built one before, I don't really see the need. Are you to build more than one? Yeah. Give me the glue. Thanks. 
mobile games? No, not really. I'm not a big uh, mobile game. I am a big gamer, so I won't say it like that. Mobile gaming, not so much, but I do video games a lot. You'll probably see on Instagram, like I did last night, I do feature Call of Duty a lot, but it's not the only game that I play. Yeah, you play Call of Duty. I do play Gundam Battle on the on mobile, though. I do do that. I actually am doing a kit bash of a Gelgu 2.0 Master Grade and an RX-75 Gun Tank Master Grade as well. So right there, that's pretty much what the antenna are going to look like all glued into place. And so they're a little spindly right now. They're not exactly straight. I can straighten those out. But for now, we can finally go to the biggest step of this subassembly so far and that is attach the two turret portions together which is going to be a lot of work and as you saw with um the way this gun sits in almost all on friction it has two guide horns here so that way you can just press fit it in and it'll stay i want to glue it in just for insurance but i really don't need to push the whole breech and cannon assembly just straight down in it'll sit flush in the turret like that the hard part is of a turret like this is the same type of um, problem you'll see with aircraft which is i'm gonna have to glue this turret in sections and not all at once otherwise you're not gonna have everything fit but since the test fit is so tight i'm not too terribly worried about how it's gonna all play out but essentially it's how it's looked let me take the periscopes off for now or not periscope, sorry, the gun sights. It's exactly how it's been looking the past few days, just because it literally snaps into place. So we're gonna start up here and try and glue these turret pieces together right here, and then we're gonna move our way to the back where we hold this section down. Or you can start back to front, however you wanna do it, however you feel. And I can tell you right now, we're gonna need some filler throughout this but we'll see how it goes this is also my least favorite part of gluing a kit just because it puts a lot of the glue on the outside and it bubbles up through seams because it's so tight and when that happens touching a kit you're going to need to do a lot of sanding and a lot of reworking if you get your fingerprints on there a little bit of glue and like you just heard me tell Archie that's gonna grab instantly but because this kit flexes so much it does take 15 minutes to set you're gonna have to hold it in place most people will use um, vice grips or something like that to do it I don't have any on hand and so I'm gonna try and hold it with my hand at least to a point where it's um, close enough that if I need to fill anything in I can just fill it Yeah, once that's all done and this is all glued up I will be doing the rest of the turret on a live stream just wanted to because I know I couldn't do it earlier in the week because this stuff kind of just melted the antenna clean off because um, again of that soft plastic so that's how you do the antenna there's where I work the hobby store I'm going to glue this down off camera just so I can get my hands closer to the kit and um I'll go back and start doing, when I do the balsa racks and larger major sub-assemblies on the rest of the turret, I'll film that. But uh, thanks for joining us on this live stream. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something about scale modeling. At least anything you can glean from it is pretty good. Um, and yeah, hopefully if anybody's in the Florida area and wants to get into scale modeling, I have a pretty good selection here. So please come and visit us. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you guys next time.